watching the SEC on ESPN. Ole Miss won the coin toss and will receive the opening kickoff from Joseph Bullivus. Back deep, Elijah Moore. And we are underway. Very little breeze in the stadium. And a good kick about three yards deep. Down on the field, here's Holly Rowe. Well, think about what an unusual evening. Opposing quarterbacks are young men of Samoan ancestry who grew up pretty We'll get back to Holly in a moment. Obviously, problems with her microphone. So Ta'amu, the senior from right near Pearl Harbor, looking to throw on the first play. Wants to go deep. There's a receiver open. Right out of the gate. NWO. A TD. DK Metcalf. This team loves to take deep shots. Jordan Tamu has a tremendous touch on the deep ball. Maximum protection and a beautiful throw to start. Brand new starting secondary for Alabama, and they knew they were going to get challenged tonight. First play out of the gate, Ole Miss strikes for a touchdown. Matt Luke said we absolutely need to get off to a good start and build some belief. They were hammered by the tide in Tuscaloosa. They're looking to see if he stepped out of bounds. He might have yeah. right there at the two yard line. Well, that doesn't look conclusive from that angle to me. What do you think? Yeah, that's pretty close. I mean, again, it's got to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call in the field. That looks like he's out of bounds. Right heel, white shoe on the white. I think they're going to have to line up a play goal line offense here at the two. Well, they got annihilated last year, yeah. 66 to 3. After beating Alabama in 2014 and 15, and watching Alabama come from 21 points down in 2016, the start critical for Ole Miss. Absolutely. Tonight. Last year in Tuscaloosa, I did the game. Opening kickoff, Alabama got a huge hit and set the tone, and then they just steamrolled Ole Miss. And this wide receiving core. With so much notoriety and so much success, only six combined catches between the three superstars a year ago. A big one on the first play of the game for DK Metcalf. And what a specimen he is. 6'4", oh, 230 pounds. Great bloodlines. His dad, Terrence, was an All-American offensive lineman here at Ole Miss. Played in the NFL. DK grew up here in Oxford, a hometown hero. What Ole Miss has to be thinking right now, they're going to assume they're going to take this away. Mm -hmm. So they have to be thinking offensively, hey, what is our first play here on the two-yard line, if that's what we have to line up? Because with that play and the energy that it put into the crowd, they need to find a way to get the ball in the end zone if this play is going to be overturned. Hubert Owens, the referee, talking with John Bible, the replay official. This crowd of nearly 65,000 awaits. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Mm. Not conclusive. Right. That's why it stands and not confirmed. What a start for Matt Luke's team. I thought the shot from the end zone back toward Metcalf running toward the camera it looked like he stepped out of bounds at the two. For Tom with the touchdown pass. And Luke Logan adds the extra point. 11 seconds in. Ole Miss goes to the strength of its team. And Bill Lamagne, our official in the booth, what do you think here? The hat cam shot, you can't prove that the heel came down. And the toe was in bounds, but our shot that came from the pylon 
looked like the back of that heel did touch the ground, was just barely on the white. But uh, they felt obviously it wasn't conclusive, so the play stands as called. And Coach Luke, who talked about the importance of a great start, got exactly what he wanted. Interim coach a year ago, took over when Hugh Freeze resigned. Near the start of the season, they went six and six, won three of the last four. They removed the interim label at the end of the year, and a surprise to some, the team was delighted. And this is his dream job. Yeah. Played for Ole Miss in the 90s, was a four-year starting center. Coached here under David Cutcliffe and Hugh Freeze. Looking for his biggest win as a head coach. Josh Jacobs brings the kickoff back. This is the second kickoff return by Alabama all season. The other one, a touchdown by Jacobs. Take a look at the touchdown again. I just want to show you something. They kept the tight end and the back end. Seven-man protection, knowing they wanted to take a shot on the first play of the game. Give your quarterback the most protection you can give him. Nice, clean pocket. And we talked about the touch that Jordan Tahamu has throwing the ball deep down the field. Could not have scripted a better start for the Rebels. Another similarity, veteran offensive lines on each side. Tungo Vailoa protected on the left end by Jonah Williams, perhaps the best left tackle in the country. Out of the gun with five receivers. The lefty on target, Irv Smith, the tight end, across the 40 and dives to the 45 yard line nice play to start the game for Alabama 18 yards how often would you imagine seeing Alabama start the game in an empty formation with four wideouts this time they have a back in the backfield but it's the skill set of their quarterback that has kind of changed the way they do business right now on offense this is not a mistake Alabama is averaging 309 yards per game passing swing pass Damian Harris and another first down Two plays, two first downs for the Crimson Tide as we look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. Damian Harris rushed for a thousand yards a year ago, passed up the NFL. And in the words of the Mississippi coaches, Jerry Judy is the best, most talented player on the offense for Alabama. Lots of running room outside. It's been a porous Ole Miss defense. And Alabama scores on three plays as Harris takes it to the end zone from 43 yards out. Well, just poor defensive fundamentals. You've got an end that's going to have a shot, another end that's chasing, and a safety that runs away from the play. you got to be able to make plays when you're unblocked. Here comes a defensive linebacker, misses it, the middle linebacker. Bad angle by the safety, and Damian Harrison. That was Momo Sonogo who just had a bad angle to the football. He was unblocked, but a bad angle to Damian Harris, and just like that, chance for a tie. And it is tied off the foot of Joseph Bullivis. Ole Miss has been a disaster on defense, particularly last week when Southern Illinois scored 41 and had 629 yards of offense, which made you wonder what Alabama might do here tonight. Entertaining start just getting started in Oxford. Downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. Damian Harris in the end zone for the first time this season. And we're tied at seven. Just a minute and 21 seconds in. Joseph Bullivis kicks off for the second time. Redshirt freshman from Mandeville, Louisiana. This one returnable for the freshman Elijah Moore, but he calls for the fair catch and brings the ball to the 25. Here's Adnan Verk. Well, it gets Coach O off the hot seat for wow. a week. They couldn't kick a field goal last year. They were 16 for 27 kicking field goals. They get yeah. Cole Tracy, grad transfer from Assumption College, D2 in Worcester, Mass. And he has been a difference maker at the start of the year. From the 25, 
Ole Miss's second play. They threw a 75-yard touchdown pass on the first. Trying to do it again. And it's incomplete. Looking for DeMarcus Lodge. And broken up by Trayvon Diggs. Well, that's what they do. I mean, they go max protection again. Keep the tight end in the back end. Try the other side. Diggs, who has long arms, just able to get in here and get a hand on the football. His receiver had a step. The ball was perfectly thrown. But Trayvon Diggs made an outstanding play on the football. We have five members of the secondary from last year's national championship team that went on to the NFL, three on active squads, two on practice squads. Well, that was a lot of secondary talent to replace. Tamu ahead for four. They'll mark him down on the slide of the 29-yard line, pressured by Quinnen Williams, the nose man, who's had a great start to the year for Bama. Ole Miss wants to go quickly. Last year, they were 0 for 13 on third down against Alabama. Important part of the game for the Rebels offense. And they have to feel like they have to score a lot tonight with the way their defense has played all year. The pass deflected and falls incomplete. A couple of pumps by Tamu as he tried to find somebody. To hold on to the ball longer than he wanted to. Good tight coverage. It was two deep safeties and man underneath. Nobody able to break free for Ta'amu, and Alabama forces a punt. Mac Wilson knocked the pass down. Here's Mac Brown to punt. After an outstanding career as the head coach at the University of Texas. Now this is different Mac Brown. But like our pal Mac, this Mac is pretty good at what he does too. Sends it out of bounds. So the dangerous freshman jail. This has been a very exciting series in recent years. Ole Miss had the wins over highly ranked Bama teams in 14 and 15. Both of those Ole Miss teams were ranked. This team tonight is not 75 straight wins against unranked foes. The all-time record in FBS football. Damian Harris collared, but another good gain of about seven on first down. A couple of alarming numbers for this Ole Miss defense as they come in tonight. Last week against Southern Illinois, they gave up 629 yards. Now they played better in the second half, but that's way too many yards. Against this Alabama team a year ago in Tuscaloosa, 345 yards on the ground they gave up. So Wesley McGriff, the defensive coordinator, he thinks they're going to be better. He actually liked the way they played in the win against Texas Tech and they held the usually high flying Red Raiders to 27 points. But it's been a struggle last year and this year. They're one of the worst teams in the country on defense. Really remarkable. They went six and six given how bad they were on D. You've got to try to make a team like this earn everything. Don't give them easy plays down the field. Josh Jacobs in it running back. Tungo Vailoa checked it down. Henry Ruggs, and the ball is out at the end of the play on a big hit. The Rebels have it in bounds. Well, there was no call initially. This is excellent defense. This is excellent defense. They made Tunga Vailoa throw the ball underneath, and then they gang tackled. And I think before the Ruggs was down, the ball was ripped out. It was coming out for sure. Wamed Sonogo in there. Jalen Julius. He seemed to be the key player in knocking it away from Henry Ruggs. It was fired up to play Ole Miss tonight for a lot of reasons, including the fact his the brother, Cavante, is on the defense Ole for Ole Miss. The previous play is under further review. Sean, in the two games back to back that Ole Miss beat Alabama, they forced seven turnovers. That was a big part of their success in those two wins. This could be a huge break for their much maligned defense right now. Right about midfield. Well, you mentioned last week, they gave up 38 points in the first half to right. Southern Illinois, an FCS team, a good FCS team, it seemed, watching the tape, coached by Nick Hill. Gave up only three points in the second half, in large part because they started to take the ball away. Yeah. They got three takeaways three consecutive in the second possessions. half and scored yeah. two defensive touchdowns. That's right. They're going to need a lot more of that as the season goes along. When you have an offense the way they have defensively. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. 
You just got to come up with an occasional stop or maybe force a turnover and give the football to your offense. Now, with great field position, we've seen two first down plays where Ole Miss has gone play action with maximum protection and taking a shot deep against this inexperienced Alabama secondary. But with two safeties deep, this suggests running play here for Ole Miss. C.J. Moore recovered the fumble for Ole Miss. Here's Scotty Phillips in his first year here at Ole Miss, and he's had an immediate impact out of junior college, Jones County Junior College. He rushed for 204 yards in that opening win against Texas Tech. He's quick, he's strong, he's a good pass protector. He's really been a nice addition to this offense. Just the eighth player ever to rush for 200 yards in a game for Ole Miss. Ta'amu has good feet, throws on the run. Out of bounds, intended for D.K. Metcalf. Mac Wilson, little linebacker, bringing pressure on Jordan Ta'amu. Both of these quarterbacks are mobile guys. They both have the ability to extend plays and buy themselves some time. That time, Ta'amu just not able to get the connection. Looked like Alabama was offside. Might be a freebie for Tom. Oh, Metcalf looked like he pushed off yeah. from here. No flag there. Incomplete pass. It did appear that the Crimson Tide was across the line of scrimmage. Well, we mentioned an inexperienced secondary. That's Patrick Outside. Sertain. Defense, number 92, five-yard penalty. Still third down. Metcalf was working one-on-one -on, -one on a Guy that most considered the top cornerback recruit coming out of high school last year. Played at American Heritage High School down in Plantation, Florida. Outstanding young prospect. Played for his dad, Patrick. Three-time Pro Bowl defensive back to the Miami Dolphins. Tom, whose pass deflected on third down and five, and it falls incomplete. He had A.J. Brown. That was Isaiah Bugs that was able to get a hand on the football to stop that third down play. So Ole Miss will punt. This is the kind of position on the field if you had a fake in your arsenal. It would be the time to do it. Mac Brown to punt it away to Jalen Waddell, and he'll try to prevent him from making a play. He's averaged over 12 yards per punt return. True freshman out of Houston. Tumbling rugby style punt and a little too much on it. Back we go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, it's such a unique game when two brothers are playing against each other. Henry Ruggs, the third on Alabama as a wide receiver, might actually get tackled tonight by his little brother, Kevonte, number 27 for Old Miss, who is just back from a concussion last week. He's playing tonight. He's ready to take the field right now. I talked to their mom, Nikita. She said she might need her anxiety medication on hold because she's so stressed out about the brothers. But she said, you know, it's cool. Henry really bullied Kevontae when they were little boys because Henry was 14 months older. But now that Kevontae's bigger, he is very eager to get even with his older brother, but littler brother tonight. Wesley McGriff, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, told us he might have to calm Kevontae rugs down before the game starts. He's been fired up all week. Tied at seven. Tua Tungo Vailoa steps up, throws a little too high for the tight end, Irv Smith, who can get down the field at 6'4", 241. Alabama has two different tight ends. Hale Hentges is the guy that's kind of their on-the-line tight end. Their run-blocking guy does a lot for him. Irv Smith is their move tight end that they can get matchups in the passing game. He was open there. Just a slight overthrow by Tungo Vailoa. Josh Jacobs, the running back. They faked it to Jacobs. Tungo Vailoa, a good runner. Across the 20, but that's all. Josiah Coatney, a part of the front four for the Rebels, made the tackle. And how about these numbers on third down for Tua Tungo Vailoa this season? 10 for 10 passing, and he's run for two first downs. <laughs> that is pretty good. But he hasn't done it on the road yet, so this is his first opportunity in an SEC stadium. And they beat Louisville in the opener in Orlando, Florida. Had a home win against Arkansas State. Scored 50-plus in both games. They've never started a year with three straight 50-point games. Tungo Vailoa still on target on 
third down. And Jerry Judy is in the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. He beat Zedrick Woods, but I put this on C.J. Moore, the other safety, for not being over the top of the defense. Wesley McGriff said, we cannot give up the middle of the field, and we've got to know where four is all the time. The other safety got swept to the other side and didn't help on the slot and an easy throw on third and long for Tua. Well, McGriff said, we can't give up the middle of the field. We can't give up explosive big plays. We have to put most of our attention on number four. Judy, we think he's their most talented offensive player. They didn't do any of it. And now Ole Miss trails for the first time tonight after the Bullivus extra point. Lots of big plays here in Oxford. That's a 79-yard touchdown for Alabama. Losers at home to BYU and LSU, respectively. Ole Miss trying to pull off the biggest surprise in the top 10 if they could do it tonight. They're three touchdown underdogs at home against the defending national champs. Joseph Bullivus down to Elijah Moore. Let's go back to the touchdown now. Jerry Judy is the focus of the Ole Miss defense. Okay, here he is in the slot. This is a zone defense. It's three deep zone. You're gonna see guys running back. The guy who makes the mistake is the free safety right here. C.J. Moore, if you're the middle safety in three deep, you have to be deeper than the deepest receiver. Jerry Judy runs right by him in a zone defense. That's just a poor play by the free safety because he's responsible to be the deepest guy in that coverage, and it's an easy touchdown. And now for Tua Tom Gavailoa, seven touchdown passes, averaged 37 yards apiece. <laughs> Scotty Phillips, nice run on first down for the Rebels, and he got nine, chopped down by Dylan Moses. 79 yards on the last touchdown pass to Judy. Such an accurate passer. Great touch on the deep ball. Anticipation, reads the, the field, finds your weaknesses. Play fake to Phillips. They want to throw it on second and one, and it's dropped by Demarcus Lodge, who didn't play last week against Southern Illinois as he was in the concussion protocol. And you just get the feeling, Sean, that you, Ole Miss can't afford plays like that. And that they've got to convert when they get nice opportunities. Tamu hands it off on the run. Phillips into the secondary, across midfield, and down to the 43-yard line of Alabama. It was third and one, and they went fast, and Alabama was not set on defense. Mac Wilson, the new signal caller, got blocked by the tight end Cooley, and a first down for Ole Miss. There was a flag thrown in the middle of the field. Alabama played a tempo team last week. Holding. Offense, number one. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We play third down. Wow. Costly. Again, you just get the feeling that Ole Miss, you can't play a perfect game, but you can't shoot yourself in the foot. There's A.J. Brown blocking on Carter, number five. It wasn't a lot. Mm. And it negates a great after run the by after, Scotty after Phillips. After forcing the foul, the ball still get made the line of the game. It'll be first down, yeah. Ole Miss. Okay, that makes more sense. You mentioned the outstanding wide receiver groups, and the coaches on each side require them to be spirited blockers, yes. and both of these teams do a good job on the perimeter. They're going to call that tonight. There might be a lot of flags on both sides. Isaiah Willard, the backup running back, is in on target. A.J. Brown, most believe he's the best of the nasty wideouts from Ole Miss and a very likely first-round draft choice. He's a junior out of Starkville, Mississippi. Only one catch for six yards in the game at Tuscaloosa last year. They really focused on him. Couple of fakes and a strike for a first down, and they're back across midfield again. It's A.J. Brown, outstanding two-sport athlete, drafted as an outfielder in the 19th round by the San Diego Padres, and has spent about a week in each of the last three off-seasons with them. Mac Wilson, who is their signal caller, 
sitting on the field. Yeah, crowd booing, thinking maybe Alabama's trying to slow the tempo down. I don't think Mac Wilson would want to be out of the ball game. He's a valuable piece to this inexperienced Alabama defense. Nick Saban puts a lot of responsibility on his signal calling linebacker, and this guy is just kind of starting to get used to that. Mm -hmm. And that was a concern, particularly tonight, with the pace at which Ole Miss up. Flustered because if I do, then that's going to get handed off to my teammates and cause some problems. Here he is right here. He's reading the quarterback. He's going to try to get a deflection. He's not rushing. He's going to try to get a deflection. Gets blocked by Cooley and comes down a little awkwardly on that left leg. But already now, A.J. Brown off to a much better start than he had a year ago against this Crimson Tide defense. Joshua McMillan. Single coverage up the top. McMillan has taken the place of Wilson at linebacker. Tamu trying to take advantage of the single coverage. And he might have been hit as he threw, because that was a duck that came up well short of DeMarcus Lodge. Yeah, Anthony Jennings was able to get in there and hit Tamu as he was trying to throw the football. And because Jennings got him, watch 33 come from the top of the screen, he was not able to get enough on this football because he had single coverage on the outside and was not able to follow through on the throw. Mac Wilson back on the field for Alabama. Out of the gun on second and ten. Tom who takes off running. He got blasted and fumbled. And Alabama has the football. At the 38-yard line. Deontay Thompson knocked it out. Now one of the issues for Ole Miss, you don't get your quarterback hit in practice. You want to protect him. You tell him to slide. He goes for a tough run here, and he loses the football. A big hit by Deontay Thompson on a guy who's not used to getting hit in the open field, and he lets go of the football. He's a good runner, but he didn't secure the football there. Xavier McKinney had the first contact on Ta'amu. So each team has turned it over once. Alabama has sandwiched a couple of very short touchdown drives of three plays each around their turnover. Tongo Vailoa across midfield, slides down with a first down after a 13-yard gain with Montrell Custis closing in. I have lost track of belts and thrones <laughs> and chains and all these other things. Although I think Alabama says they, and Holly knows a lot yeah. about this, they were actually the originator of the hardware, if you will, on the sideline. She's taking meticulous notes on documenting all the sideline things. Tom Rinaldi on game day today as well. That pass incomplete. Looked like Devontae Smith didn't see it coming or wasn't expecting it to be thrown in his direction. Well, guys, we were giving the Miami turnover chain a lot of love for spawning some clones. The Boise State thrown the Memphis robe all kinds of things sprang up in week one of college football but the Alabama fans were quick to let me know they've had the turnover belt for a long time they think they started the trend and they might be right apparently it comes with oxygen Najee Harris down short of the first out of the Ole Miss 43 Momo Sonogo made the tackle he's their leading tackler for the year a big well, third down situation here for the Ole Miss defense. Good opportunity for Alabama because at this distance, you've got everything open. Run, quarterback run, and you better make sure you take care of number four in the slot. Jerry Judy. And a quarterback who hasn't missed on third down. All year. Plenty of time. Tongo Vailoa. First down and much more, not content to just get past the marker. He's inside the 30. We talk about Jerry Judy being the most dangerous receiver. This time he was the best blocker on the field. Tunga Bailoa does not convert that third down. If he doesn't pick up the block downfield by Jerry Judy, he sustained the block for a long time and got his quarterback the first down.
Jacobs and Harris, the running backs. Najee Harris, they faked it to him. Josh Jacobs, another big play. Chopped down by C.J. Moore at the 10, first down. Josh Jacobs is their change-up guy in the backfield, and he they want to do some things. Mike Loxley told us, we got to be creative to find things to do with him, and that was a two-tailback formation. I mean, they've got three or four guys that they play at that position, but Jacobs gives you the ability to do something with two backs on the field that's a little unique. First and goal, they're just on the 10-yard line. Najee Harris turns the corner and virtually untouched. Into the end zone. This is the same problem. The middle linebacker, this is Jacquez Jones, number 10, who is in now. Watch him take a bad angle to the football, underestimating the speed of Najee Harris. He's unblocked, but a bad angle. He doesn't even get a hand on him. And another easy running touchdown for the Crimson Tide. This offense has been outstanding through the first two weeks, and they don't show any sign of slowing down in this ballgame. No SEC team has ever started a season with three straight 50-point games. Alabama might be there by the half. They're averaging 54 points per game, put up 51 in the win against Louisville in Orlando to open the season, 57 last week at home against Arkansas State. Tremendous run-pass balance, a quarterback who makes great decisions. They're fun to watch. Don't often see the starting quarterback as the holder. No. But of us who took over mid-game last week after Austin Jones, their transfer kicker from Temple, flanked an extra point off each upright. Missed two at the start of the game. He's with high humidity. And more of the same on both sides. More prolific offense from Alabama, more dreadful defense from Ole Miss. Joseph Bullivis kicks off again. And Elijah Moore, another touchback. Here's Holly. Well, Coach Saban told us last night when we met with him that the first two games of the year for Alabama, he had a very strict plan when the quarterbacks were going to play. He said, I had told both guys exactly when they were coming in, and we didn't deviate from that plan no matter what. He said, but this game tonight, I don't know yet. I'm going to have to go with my gut. On the road, in a tough environment, to me, that's not the time to have a plan. He wants to stay with his gut, and if a guy is hot, have the ability to leave him in. So a slight deviation of what we've seen previously with the quarterbacks back and forth. Now the plan was to bring him in, play three series last week, and he did. Played most of the second quarter against Arkansas State, and there's an interception. Thrown into traffic by Tomo, and here comes Deontay Thompson. Stumbling down just shy of the 15-yard line. Yeah, Jordan got fooled by the coverage. Alabama disguised their coverage. They showed two safeties which means the middle of the field should be open. But at the snap, one is going to go up and one is going to go back. And that middle safety just read the quarterback. And as Jordan tried to throw deep down the middle, he was reading it and made a play on the football. He thought the middle would be open, but he was fooled by the coverage. And Deontay Thompson made him pay for it. His second interception of the season, third of his career. He's been off to a great start this season. Thompson saluted by the coaching staff as their defensive player of the game in each of the first two games of the season. One of their players of the game they generally pick two or three on each side of the ball and special teams. Damian Harris they faked it to him and Tungo Vailoa slides down with a two yard gain at 12. Two of his parents are here. Holly mentioned in the start of the telecast, the close friendship between Tua's family and Jordan Tamu's family, and it was Tua's dad who really coached both of them yeah. in a park near the Tungo Vailoa home on the island of Oahu. Along with Tua's younger brother, who is now committed to coming to Alabama as well. Pass incomplete, looking for Henry Ruggs. They're both deeply religious young men. 
Holly mentioned they frequently exchange scripture verses in a text chain that includes Mackenzie Milton, right. also from Hawaii, the outstanding quarterback at the University of Central Florida. Billy and Louisa not as happy with the way this one's going. Well, you just can't make those kind of mistakes against a team this good. On third down and seven. What do you expect? You think he was going to throw an incomplete pass on third down? Irv Smith with the fourth touchdown of the quarter. And we barely played 10 minutes here in Oxford. Four TDs for the number one team in the country. This is good coverage by JB and Hamilton, number 21, but a perfect throw by Tua Tunga Bailoa. He's got a bigger body tight end working against a smaller cornerback, and he throws a perfect pass. Well, right. that looked like holding, didn't it? The camera shot we had. Looked like they had Josiah Coatney in the middle of that defensive line around the neck. Joseph Bulovis, another extra point. He might be leg weary already between the PATs and the kickoffs. Take a look at the protection. Here's the hold at the top of the screen. That was Lester Cotton, the left guard, who got away with the takedown. But it doesn't take anything away from this throw. And look at Irv Smith use his tight end body and just kind of like he's boxing out for a rebound, box out the defender, and go up and high point the football for another Alabama touchdown. Second of the season for Irv Smith. He's caught 22 passes in his career, and five of them have been yeah. touchdown receptions. So that is an excellent ratio, as is this ratio of touchdowns to drives for Alabama. Yeah, and this is what is concerning for Ole Miss's defense. They're not making them earn anything. I mean, it's happening as fast as Alabama can line up and call plays. Perfect on third down, just about perfect on every down. Twenty eight points in the first quarter ties the most scored by the Crimson Tide in an opening quarter under Nick Saban. They did it in 2010 against Duke 2015 against Charleston Southern and they have 440 to yeah. put more points on the board here. Boy, Ole Miss got off to that great start. 75 yard touchdown pass on the first play of the game. It has been all Alabama since. And I think. Going back to Holly's report, I think we will see Jalen Hurts now, possibly even this next possession, because they have complete control of the football game. But that's one of the things that Nick Saban said was a double-edged sword. You're ahead. Right. You feel comfortable perhaps making a change, but you don't want the momentum of the game to change when you have them on the ropes. He has a lot of respect for the scoring ability of this Ole Miss team. So you wonder if he'll keep the throttle down with Tungo Vailoa. He did say... He has great compassion yeah. for Jalen Hurts. He said, when else in the history of college football has a guy gone 26 and 2 as the starting quarterback yeah. and lost his job, but he's handled it with grace. Second and five, Scotty Phillips. Deontay Thompson swung him around and sent him backwards. They'll give him forward progress to about two yards short of the first down. I just want to go back and make one more point on that because th that's the point. This is not like a freshman that you want to keep interested, you know, like at Clemson or at Georgia with a Justin Fields. This is a guy who's 26 and 2 as a starter and took your team to the national championship game two games in a row. Here's Scotty Phillips manages to get outside and has the first down, shoved down by Mac Wilson. They'll spot it at the 45 yard line. Ole Miss has to just stick to their plan. They can't look at the scoreboard right now. They know they've got a prolific offense. They've got to get in a little rhythm here. They haven't converted on a couple third downs. They need to keep trying to blend the run and the pass and take their shots when they present themselves. Isaiah Woolard gives Scotty Phillips a breather. He stayed in the block for Tom, who on target to DK Metcalf. First down, he got chopped down to the 37 by Trayvon Diggs and Deontay Thompson. Really good decision. Instead of trying to force one down the field, he looked deep to A.J. Brown. It wasn't there. Take the underneath throw and let that big guy try to make a play for you. And 
movement for a false start against the Rebels. False start. Offense. Number 14. Five-yard penalty. First down. Todd, you played on some great teams at Penn State. One and a that Tom was in tonight he knows how porous the defense has yeah. been not just this year but last so I think you could expect that he might try to force it yeah. in there a couple of times tonight feeling like they have to score every time they go out there yeah but you, you can't you have to stay with your plan you got to believe you got enough time to make some plays because what you don't want to do is force one down the field and get it picked off because you got greedy like he did the last possession Isaiah Willard a short gain just across the line of scrimmage, he got knocked down by Quinn and Williams. Plus, you want to try to let your defense rest a little bit mm -hmm. if you can and try to regroup the best they can. Willard remains the back. Tom, who faked it to him, and it's incomplete. Trying to fire to Dawson Knox, the tight end. I think we're going to get another holding call. Alabama's forcing Ta'amu to hold the ball longer than he wants to. This is a quick trigger passing game. Holding offense, number 50, 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. Well, that's the center right in the middle of the action, Sean Rawlings. Right here. Last week against Southern Illinois, nine penalty. There's the tackle, the takedown by the center, and that's a hard ask to block Quinn and Williams, who's been the most productive and disruptive inside defensive tackle for Alabama. Veteran offensive line, and Tamu is dumped. Christian Miller, the linebacker, bringing the pressure with his first full sack of the season, had a half sack coming in. Again, the coverage is forcing Ta'amu to hold the ball longer. He wasn't able to get rid of it when he tried to cock the throw, and he held it too long and got hit and sacked. Third down, 28. There is a flag down. Jump ball and almost intercepted. Tended for DK Metcalf. Savion Smith had the coverage. Offside, defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty, third down. Raquan Davis gives Ole Miss another chance with a minute 39 to go in the first quarter. Well, you wonder if this is even possibly four down territory, if you can get maybe half of the yardage here and get into Alabama territory. Down three scores right now. Just a three-man rush to Amu. To the 42-yard line goes A.J. Brown. They'll give him the 41, but he's well short of the first down. And you're right, it was a hesitation for a moment by Matt Luke. He thought about leaving the offense out there. The last time they tried to do a little rugby style punt to the right and they actually had two gunners down there to catch the football but the ball bounced over both guys heads. See if they try to execute that a little better this time and pin Alabama deep. Not too much leg again. That's a waste. When you keep kicking it in the end zone. Tomorrow. Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. The story of James Conner's incredible journey, battled cancer while at Pitt. And he had a terrific performance for the Steelers last week in Cleveland. Plus, Randy Moss ranks this week's best catches in college football. And you got Moss. So happy for James Conner. Holly spent a lot of time with him. We were in Pittsburgh last week, and very likable young man stepping in for Le'Veon Bell, and really, they didn't miss a beat. Yeah. Didn't win the game, which was a right. surprise to many. A tie in Cleveland. So many quotes. I live in Ohio, and it was like that, that tie, breaking their losing streak with a tie was the most Cleveland thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Tongo Bailoa all day to throw it. Uh, it's going to be a costly penalty. They, they defended the play well. They forced the underneath throw. They ran to the football, but they hit the quarterback late. And another costly penalty. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number four. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. 
I mean, this is well defended. Victor Evans is getting blocked. He's getting buried. He stays with the play. Credit him for hustling, but right what there, the doing? throw down. When he hit him, it was okay. But when he threw him to the ground, the that's what drew the flag. The, the penalty is enforced from the previous that's just spot. stupid. Automatic first down. Again, last week against Southern Illinois, nine penalties for this Ole Miss team that hurt him. And now already in the first quarter, what is that, their fifth, fourth penalty? Mm -hmm. And that one's a killer. They actually yeah. made a good defensive play, That's as right. you said. Drop Jalen Waddle. They haven't been able to cover, and they put very little pressure on Tungo Vailoa. Najee Harris on what could be the last play of the first quarter if Alabama wants it to be. 243 yards and 28 points in one quarter of football for this Alabama offense. It's just, they are dynamic. Well, you and I talked during the week. We wondered if Southern Illinois scored 41 and had 629 yards right. of offense, what might Alabama do? I mean, they're on a pace for almost 1,000 yards of offense. <laughs> Come on. Wow. The number one team in the country. Looking very much like it. End of one in Oxford, 28 to 7, Alabama. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, and Holly Rowe back in Oxford, Mississippi, where Alabama scored 28 points in the first quarter, put up 243 yards of offense. Balanced again this week. Run in pass with Tua Tungo Vailoa at the helm. Take the toss, weaves through the defense, and gets taken down at the 48-yard line of Ole Miss by Josiah Coatney. Very good runner. We saw that in the championship game. Not only did he make some great throws, throw three touchdown passes against Georgia, but he also ran for a couple critical first downs. A tough physical runner. Really has quick feet. Very athletic guy. We know that about Jalen Hurts as a runner, but this guy is a pretty good runner himself. Sophomore Tungo Bailoa back up to Jalen Hurts a year ago. He's on target to Hale Henches. Usually the blocking tight end. That's his first catch of the season, just his 12th career catch, senior from Jefferson City, Missouri. Of course, the entire country got to know Tungo Bailoa when he stepped in for Jalen Hurts in the second half of the national title game in Atlanta against Georgia. They were down 13 and nothing. He led them back to the 26-23 overtime win. And then won the battle to be the starter in the preseason camp. He's on target for a first down to Devontae Smith, who caught the game-winning right. touchdown pass against Georgia, a 41-yarder in overtime. The thing you see with Tua, and we're seeing it tonight, but if you go watch Alabama practice, and he's out there with the offense, the ball doesn't hit the ground. I mean, he just hits everything. He is so accurate. He's, he's got so many intangibles and instinctive things that you can't coach or teach, no matter how good of a quarterback, coach, or offensive coordinator you are. He's got a lot of those things you can't coach. Damian Harris down to the 31. I remember the quote that we used. We did the national championship game with Holly last year for ESPN Radio. Brian Dable, who was the offensive coordinator last year, describing Tug of Iloa, said, you know, some guys from a distance can hit the side of the house. Some guys can hit the front door. Some can hit the doorknob. He can hit the keyhole. Yeah. He's that accurate. <laughs> it was 14 for 24 with three touchdowns. In that national championship win, 17th in school history for Alabama. And the favorite to win another one this year, Damian Harris, another first down, Keydron Smith the tackle. It's interesting to me because another team that is really playing great right now and has a big game tonight down in Arlington is Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And the impact that Dwayne Haskins is having on that offense is very similar to what Tua is doing for this offense, stretching the field, getting the receivers more involved and giving them a different dimension throwing the ball downfield that they haven't had in the past. This is just his third career start. And that one dropped by Irv Smith. He just kind of pulled the string on this. We don't see him do this very often. Didn't step into the throw, kind of threw it backing up and didn't get enough on it. 
because he had Irv Smith open, which in what probably would have been another touchdown running down the middle of the field. It wasn't a great throw, almost shocking. When he's off target, came into tonight, completing 71% of his passes for the season. He's 9 out of 13 tonight. This is the longest drive of the night in terms of number of plays. Josh Jacobs breaks a tackle, did not get the first down, made it to the 20, or he was taken down by Kedron Smith. Sonogo was in there, had a chance to bring him down for no gain. Pretty tough run that time by Jacobs to bring up a third down and short. Two is two for two on third down tonight, 12 for 12 for the season. Mike Loxley, the new offensive coordinator, does such a nice job calling the plays and so many options here, run or pass, with all the talent. Bull Miss showing blitz. Damian Harris stumbled as he tried to put his head down. Victor Evans prevented the first down and what will Nick Saban do? He'll send the field goal team out. Nice play by Victor Evans. We saw him get the costly penalty in the first quarter. That time he broke down against a very dangerous open field runner in Damian Harris and make the tackle. This is a defensive end working out in space against a running back. He does a nice job breaking down, keeping leverage and getting Harris to the ground. 38 yard field goal try for the redshirt freshman Bullitus. The second attempt of his career, he made a 39-yarder last week, and that's a low duck hook. About the only thing that has not gone well through the first three games for Alabama, they've not kicked the ball particularly well. They've tried two different guys and a missed opportunity there. They're replacing Andy Papanastas, the kicker on their national championship team of a year ago. All right, Adnan, great to be working with you tonight. Tim Tebow here in Oxford this weekend with our SEC Nation crew. Scotty Phillips, the ball carrier, and a flag thrown. Yeah, I think they're going to get Jordan Sims playing right guard, number 70. Personal foul, the league of hands to the face. Defense, number wow. 49. Mm. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. They got Isaiah Bugs for the penalty, but uh, Ole Miss got away with one, too. Because Jordan Sims gets a tackle right here, and this is Bugs over here with the hands of the face. They're actually up on the top here is Isaiah Bugs. Working against Greg Little, the left tackle, one of the highest regarded left tackles in yep. college football. They might have the two best left tackles in college football in this game tonight. They both project as first round picks. Greg Little, Jonah Williams, Deontay Thompson have the coverage on the tight end, Dawson Knox. You know, Matt Luke was a former offensive lineman, offensive line coach. He says of Greg Little that he's longer and a little bit heavier than Laramie Tunsil, who was the last great left tackle they had here. And a first round pick. Tomo throws a beautiful deep ball, a stride ahead of Demarcus Lodge, who got behind the freshman, Patrick Sertain. Lodge, one of those receivers who's yet to catch a pass. That was the fourth time they've targeted him tonight, but is yet to connect. Missed last week, got hurt in the Texas Tech game, was out for concussion protocol. And we'll take a look at Jordan Ta'amu. Alabama has been able to disrupt his rhythm. This pass offense is very quick trigger, all on rhythm. And it's third down and 10. Four for his last 13. Saw his parents here. Unlike Tua Tungo Vailoa, he was not highly recruited, didn't have a Division I offer out of high school in Pearl City, Hawaii. Timeout, Ole Miss. University of Hawaii, Step whom he first time out of the dreamed about playing as a kid, offered him a walk on situation as a defensive back. <laughs> Live in Hawaii, approximately. But three great players right now, and they all, yeah. three of them, look up to Marcus Mariota. Yeah. Here's where you need your best player to make a play right here. A.J. Brown, three catches. They need him to step up and make a play. Third down and 10 to Amu under pressure. Escapes. Has the first down and much more. Slides down. 
at the 44 yard line of Alabama with a 23 yard gain. Big play, big play. You need a conversion. The pocket collapses. You try to keep the play alive. You break a couple arm tackles and you get your team a new set of downs and you protect your body with the slide. After the play fake to Scotty Phillips going deep for single coverage and incomplete. Well covered by Trayvon Diggs. He had DK Metcalf, Trayvon, the younger brother of Stephon Diggs, former University of Maryland star, and now having a great career with the Minnesota Vikings. That ball needs to be thrown outside, the over the outside shoulder of the receiver. Because it was inside, it allowed Diggs to make a nice play on the ball. Diggs is 6'2 with long arms, and that throw inside gave him a chance to make a play. On second and ten, back to the run with Scotty Phillips. He got three, really not in field goal range right now. Where do you have a matchup on third down? You've got to get protection first, but where do you have a matchup? Is it one of your receivers, or is it possibly your tight end, Dawson Knox, that draws the best matchup? Knox is going to be up here. It looks like he's going to be on Trayvon Diggs. That doesn't look like a good matchup to me, unless Diggs is blitzing off that slot. You'd think four down territory here for Coach Matt Luke. Pressure for Tamu running for his life. Throws, caught, DK Metcalf. Nope, out of bounds. Save yep. the officials along the near sideline. He had gone out of bounds and came back in to try to catch the football. He ran himself out of bounds and then tried to come back in to make the catch. Watch. He steps out right here and then comes back in to catch the football. Pressure off the slot. Ta'amu had to leave the pocket, and now on fourth down, they've got to go for it. And they like to snap it usually within 11 or 12 seconds. Phil Longo, the coordinator, wanted to make sure they have the right play on this key fourth down. Four-man Alabama rush, but they still get pressure on and a sack. Christian Miller, the strong rush with help from Dylan Moses. And Alabama takes over on downs. When a quarterback is feeling too much pressure, his vision shrinks. He doesn't see the field. He had A.J. Brown open on this play, but because of the rush, his eyes went down, and so did he. And that rush starts to get to you, your vision shrinks and you start looking at bodies instead of receivers. After taking over on downs on first down, it's Josh Jacobs, a nice cut, and he has 11 yards and an Alabama first down to the Ole Miss 41, tackled by Kadir Shepard, a transfer from Syracuse, the Harvard of Central New York, with a big <laughs> win for the Orange today over Florida State. Very impressive. Very Backup impressive. quarterback too, right? Backup quarterback doing the leading the way. He had lost 10 in a row to Florida State. The last win against the Seminoles was 1966 when Syracuse had a pretty good team. Floyd Little, Larry Zonka, and Tom Coughlin were on that team. Alabama's not bad either. Judy, did he stay in bounds? The officials are trying to decide no, he did not. He's out at the seven yard line, first and goal, Alabama. It's a little bit of a stutter step. He's working on Montrell Custis. Little stutter step and then just runs by him. And again, two is so accurate when he sees him oh, yeah. wide open. You see him step out of bounds, but perfect throw again to the outside away from the defender. When a guy is a slot receiver, it's hard to jam or get contact on it, but you can't give that guy such a free release. Jacobs forced to retreat off the handoff, still turned it into a gain of about three. Chopped down by Miles Hartsfield. Alabama sitting at 334 yards of total offense here in the first half. And they've really slacked off here in the second quarter, though. They had 243 in the first quarter. Let's pick it up. Haven't scored in this quarter more than midway through. But poised to do so. Josh Jacobs finds a crease and finds the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Wow. That's just power football. Pair of double teams on the inside. 
Watch the double teams. You got a double team here and a double team here and a tight end blocking out. It's just power. Push your way into the end zone. And perhaps some taunting. There was a flag down after the touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number eight on the offense. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. We'll have the try. Imitating the fins up defensive signal by Ole Miss. And they're known as the Land Shark defense. I think the way Ole Miss has played defense last year and this year, they should probably stay away from any nicknames. But it's a tradition here. Pull of us the extra point. There is a flag. I don't know if I'd want to wear the Land Shark hat on a 90 degree and humid night. Might mess up my hair. Offside. Defense number 95. The penalty is refused. The extra point is good. Lanchuk. Next Saturday on ABC, a top 20 matchup out of the Pac-12. Number nine, Stanford. Number 20, Oregon. In Eugene, Coach David Shaw expects to have one of the Heisman favorites, Bryce Love, back for this huge matchup in the Pac-12 North. It's on ABC at 8 Eastern time. Yeah. Slow start and some injuries for Bryce Love to start. Yeah, year. slow start, but his team is playing well. And their defense has been better than they thought they might be. And Justin Herbert for Oregon, when he's healthy, they're really good. Mario Cristobal, the head coach, former assistant at Alabama, has really tried to take some of that Alabama culture up to Eugene in terms of toughness, in terms of their off-season strength and conditioning program blending the speed that they've always had and the flash they've had with a little bit of power and he's got a special quarterback when he's healthy with all the success for Alabama under Dick Saban they have to continue to replace assistant coaches they have six new members of the coaching staff this year who weren't here last year yeah. they promoted from within to the coordinator positions Mike Loxley on offense Tosh the boy on defense both were position coaches a year ago all of us Boy. Crowd grows. And you're down 35 to 7. With well, that fair catch, you gained five yards. Isaiah Woolard. Is that the Heisman Trophy front runner right now? It's so early in the season, it almost seems silly, but nobody playing any better than he is. Well, I'll tell you, you know, a big opportunity. Obviously for Ohio State tonight and their quarterback. I thought I saw Kyler Murray today. I watched oh, him. Wow. He was special. He's fantastic. And his numbers through three games almost identical to Baker Mayfield's last year yeah. through his first three games. Yeah, he's replacing the Heisman Trophy winner, and there really hasn't been any drop-off at quarterback for Oklahoma. Demarcus Lodge stopped by Patrick Sertain, a gain of eight. They move it back to the 32, so call it seven. Second down and three, under seven minutes to go now. In the first half, on a hot night, the temperature's still in the high 80s here in Oxford. Short of the first down by Dylan Moses. He might be the next star in a long line of great linebackers at Alabama. Well, this team, you know, Nick Saban, their ability to recruit, their ability to develop talent, a lot of these young guys, we mentioned all new secondary starters. Those guys all played on special teams last year. And then you've got guys stepping up at linebacker, and you've got guys that are stepping up in that defensive front that are ready to take on bigger roles. Third down and one, and Phillips dropped for a loss, big loss. Back inside the 31, penetration by Quinnen Williams, who's had a tremendous start to his redshirt sophomore season. Watch just inside. Now this is kind of a bear defense you have. They're covering up the guard, both guards in the center and Quinnen Williams, who has been a disruptive force all season. He doesn't look as imposing as some of the other defensive tackles they've had over the last few years, but highly, highly productive on the inside. Great technique player. To go over for Jerron Payne, who is the 13th player taken in the draft this year. The 
first round, one of four first round picks off the Alabama campus. He was drafted by the Redskins. Here's Jalen Waddle. Whoa, that might have saved the touchdown for Ole Miss as he got tackled by Momo Sonogo after a 35 yard return of a 37 yard punt from Matt Brown. Now Waddle showed what he could do as a punt returner in that opener against Louisville. A very exciting young receiver returner. Outstanding short space quickness can really make people miss and you add him to that trio of sophomore wide receivers in the tight end Irv Smith. It's just another weapon <laughs> at the disposal of the quarterback. He got timed at 4-3-7 in the 40 and a couple of his teammates said oh no he's faster than that. Jalen Hurts is in the game now for the first time. Tosses it to Najee Harris. Nice cut. He got eight on first down. And this brings up a, a point as we see Jalen Hurts. You know the new rule this year for the red shirt. They changed it so that players could actually play in four games and still be able to protect a red shirt. This is the third game and this is the third time Jalen Hurts has played. So nobody knows exactly what the plan is for him or what Nick Saban's thinking what Jalen Hurts is thinking. I kind of think Nick Saban's plan is look. I love both guys. I may need both guys to win every game this year. And so I'm approaching it that way. I'm not thinking about red shirts. It'd be interesting to see where Jalen comes on on that opinion. He's a junior chased out of bounds by Kevante Rux. Short of the first down loss of a couple on the play. I mean the the it's just such a new rule in a new situation. It's kind of a win-win for both coaches and players. But in the case of a guy like Jalen Hurts, he's going to graduate in December. If he did redshirt, he could go somewhere else and play for two years. But he may just want to stay at Alabama because he loves it here. And Tua may be gone. That's right. You never know. The way he's playing, they rule the last play an incomplete pass. So this is third down and two. With the starter each of the previous two years who went as we said 26 and 2 as the starting quarterback and is among the all time leaders in several categories at Alabama. He's throwing to the end zone for a touchdown to Jerry Judy with Montrell Custis in coverage 22 yard touchdown. Well, again he's the go to guy This is a perfect throw by Jalen Hurts. But you can't let this guy get off the ball without any collision. You, you've got to stop his momentum. He's too good, and the quarterbacks are too accurate to give him that kind of a release to get to the end zone. Wesley McGriff, the defense coordinator, said that to us yesterday. You can't let them free release from yeah. the line of scrimmage. You need to jam at the line and disrupt them, slow them down. That pass right there showed me what I've seen on tape the first two games. Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback this year in the passing game than he was the last two years. I credit Mike Loxley. I credit new quarterback coach Dan Enos. And I credit the celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Yard for Teachers platform. Visit the College Football Playoff Foundation, www.cfp-foundation.org to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers Week. See how you can get involved. Great initiative and salute all the teachers who have helped these young men get to where they are. After some hesitation, Elijah Moore decided to try to run one back and why not? Down 42 to 7. Here comes a flag. Excellent return. He's an explosive return man. Yeah. Been very conservative in bringing the ball back. There is a flag down. During the return, holding the receiving team, number 14, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. DK Metcalf guilty of the hold. With more on extra yard for Teachers Week, here's Holly. Well, Dawson Knox, the tight end for Ole Miss, is one of the most progressive academic young men on this team. He's got a great managing, uh, managerial finance major with a minor in entrepreneurship. He said the teacher that's been the most impactful for him was his high school teacher at Brentwood Academy, Jason Matthews, who is here in the stands. Ironically, his son also plays on this Ole Miss team, Bryce Matthews. Scotty Phillips on first down. Holly, you have more? Jason Matthews teaches at Brentwood Academy and he actually got
Dawson Knox interested in finance. He said he taught me all about economic supply and demand. That led him to his major here at Ole Miss. So the impact of a high school teacher lingering effects. And Knox came here largely for the academics. He was a walk on not on scholarship when he arrived. Phillips taken down by Anthony Jennings. He's a good player. They have not found a way to get the ball to the tight ends. But when you have all those terrific receivers, he's not going to be one of the top options. Has a lot of high football IQ as a quarterback in high school before switching to tight end. Tamu goes down. Under pressure again. And he's down at the 10 yard line. Christian Miller's been a force in the face of Tamu tonight, fifth year senior out of Columbia, South Carolina. Alabama is able to do what they want to do on defense. That's play with two safeties, rush with four, and get enough pressure to harass the quarterback. They're playing man coverage underneath. There's no opening for the receivers. Ta'amu has to hold the ball longer than he wants. And they're getting to him and rattling him. Mac Brown, the punter, sophomore from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Jalen Waddle from midfield retreating. Yeah, he waved his hand. He, he, he's trying to act like he didn't, but he kind of raved that hand just quick enough to signal the fair catch. Well, if you're not cheating, you're only cheating yourself. Here's Adnan Verk. Receiving team completed a fair catch. The ball was dead when he called it. First down. Sure do. And add in, you just don't walk into the carrier dome and put up points on the orange defense. Actually, it is staggering how bad the Florida State offense yeah. has been at the start of this year against Virginia Tech, Samford, and now Syracuse. The Willie Taggart era not off to a great Whoa. start. Yeah, a couple of the new coaches. Off to rough starts. Nebraska loser today against Troy. They're 0-2 for the first time since 1957 under Scott Frost. I am a big believer he will get that completely turned around as he did at Central Florida when he inherited a winless team and two years later they went undefeated. Well, you know what, Troy is a good football team now. Neil Brown has done a great job there. That's the same team that went into Baton Rouge and beat LSU last year in a very convincing type win. Yeah, they get well paid to do it. They got over a million dollars to go to Lincoln today. They got almost a million to win in Baton Rouge against the Tigers last year. Devontae Smith taken across the boundary by Kadron Smith. And Nebraska, some tough luck right out of the gate. They did not play their opener. It got canceled because of weather. And I think that really threw them off. They were supposed to play Akron. Jalen Hurts carries for a first down. So they had some first game sloppiness, which should have been their second game against Colorado. Right. Didn't play well, didn't play well today either. And lost their quarterback in the Colorado well, game. That's too. a trend. Yeah. You know, guys who get beat out, they only had two scholarship quarterbacks. And when they settled on their starter, the backup left. Yeah. Whatever happened to I'm going to stay and earn the job. Plus, you're always one injury away, which happened. They've had to play a walk on now the last two weeks, at Nebraska. Well, and that's kind of what we're seeing here mm -hmm. with, with Alabama. We have two very talented quarterbacks, different skill sets. One left hander, one right hander, one a little bit more known as a runner, one a little bit more known as a passer, but both effective and both great leaders on this football team. Irv Smith, another catch for a first down. He's caught three tonight. Jalen Hurts, four out of five, passing off the bench for 44 yards and a touchdown. Approaching a minute and a half to go in the half. Hurts, a terrific runner, knew exactly where he needed to get for the first down. Last year, Jalen Hurts started in the game against Ole Miss. After an early miss, he had Calvin Ridley open on a corner route he missed him and after that settled down and played really well it was 12 of 19 for 197 yards and two touchdowns and he also ran for over 100 yards and a touchdown in that game a real complete football game a year ago against this rebel defense yeah. 
individually and as a team. They had 613 yards against Ole Miss last year in Tuscaloosa. That's Damian Harris, the ball carrier. They're over 400 yards of offense now in the first half tonight. We've talked about the quarterback. We've talked about the receivers, the backs, the offensive line doing a nice job as well. This is Jonah Williams is the left tackle, the only guy playing the same position as a year ago. In a preseason first team All-American, a screen and Henry Ruggs makes it 48 to seven Alabama with under a minute to go in the half on a 13 yard touchdown. We mentioned linemen playing in different positions. Ross Persbacher was a starting guard for the last couple years. He's the center now. Watch number 71 on the screen, get downfield, get a block on Ruggs' brother and Ruggs the senior takes it into the end zone. Block, hold, grab. It looked like Kivante wanted a shot at his brother, got <laughs> grabbed by the jersey for a moment. He still did get there, but his brother was already in the end zone. Bolivis, another extra point. And this is Ruggs on the Ole Miss side because they get more tickets as the home team. They needed a lot of tickets with two of her sons going head to head tonight. A much happier night for Henry Ruggs, the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama. Well, we mentioned no team in the history of the SEC has ever started the season with three straight 50 point games. Alabama is one point away from doing it. And uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're going to do it. <laughs> Boy, that is a stretch now. ESPN News is projecting that Alabama will become the first team ever to do it. Think of all the great football teams yeah. in this conference over all the years, but Nick Saban's team is going to establish another first. Well, the last time they started with two games at Alabama was 1925. The first two games they beat Union College and Birmingham Southern by scoring over 50. Our director Scott Johnson was working those games. We wish Scott a happy birthday. He celebrated earlier this week. Elijah Moore. I can see maybe now why they have done fair catches on the kickoffs because both times they've returned it, they've had penalties. Mm -hmm. So it's hard enough against the Alabama defense without pinning yourself back even further because of penalties on kickoff return team. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 85, half the distance from the, to the goal, first down. Alex Weber called for the penalty. Don't miss Sunday night baseball. Big one for the Dodgers and the Cardinals. Playing the final game of a four game series at Bush Stadium. Both teams right in the thick of the very tight playoff race in the National League. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. Managerial change made a big difference for the St. Louis Cardinals this year. At least it seems to have. Isaiah Willard, the ball carrier. Alabama does have all three timeouts left. <laughs> and I think Nick Saban is doing the right thing here by not using them. Isn't it good to see Jalen Hurts smiling too? Yeah, I mean, he easily absolutely. could have just gone in the tank. Tremendous and character guy. We saw that in the championship game last year. He was genuinely excited and happy for Tua. And he his handling of his situation has given him as much respect with his teammates as anything he's ever done on the field. Nick Saban got a lot of credit for putting the freshman quarterback Tungo Vailoa into the game and some other freshmen as well who helped lead the comeback. But I think they knew what they had in Tungo Vailoa. They certainly did, particularly as the thrower. They're better in the passing game with him at the helm. But as you said, it's clear that Jalen Hurts is an improved thrower this season. Willard did not get a first down, and that'll be the final play. Of the first half, it started so well for Ole Miss. They scored a touchdown on the first play from scrimmage. But it's been 49 straight points for Alabama since. 418 yards of offense, 248 of those through the air. 
Tago Vailoa threw two touchdown passes. Hurts threw two. Here's Holly. Coach Saban, the very first play of the game, Ole Miss went long and your kids got beat, but you gathered them together on the sideline, and how did you get that secondary back together? Well, we just say, we always say when we come to a place like this, you got to play the next play, so you got to, you know, let it go, focus on the next play. They got a lot of good players. They can make explosive plays, and we didn't do a very good job on the play, so we changed some things up, and the kids played better. What did you change? Well, we put a different guy over there. <laughs> the match up to 14. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, offense, over 400 yards offense. How excited are you about the balance and the, the players you've got right now? Well, you know, I, I'm really pleased with the way we're executing on offense. And, you know, a few things we could have done better. We actually missed some checks on some presses. But, you know, we're going to learn from this experience. And we got to keep playing, though. I'm gonna, I want our guys to play and, you know, finish the game right. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. That was fascinating on a lot of levels. <laughs> Halftime here at Oxford, the number one team in the country leading by 42. Welcome you back to Oxford, Mississippi, and ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. This crowd was into it when Ole Miss scored on the first play of the game on a 75-yard touchdown pass. But Alabama has dominated since. And the Crimson Tide will receive the second-half kickoff from Luke Logan. Josh Jacobs stays on his feet. Gets by the kicker. They have an angle on him, and they take him down from behind inside the 25-yard line. So as we welcome you back to Oxford, Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge, more of the same yeah. from the first half. No letting up for this Crimson Tide team. About as impressive yeah. to start this season as any team I can remember. We know they're always going to play great defense, right? Nick Saban's a defensive guy. But this offense and what they are doing offensively, two quarterbacks, both played great. But Tonga Bailoa just gives them a different dimension to their passing game. They've got young, talented receivers. Think about this now. Since Alabama won their first national championship under Nick Saban in 2009, they've only ranked in the top 30 in pass offense one time. Last year, they ranked 91st and still won the national championship. Coming into the game tonight, averaging 309 yards a game passing, and they're well on their way to passing that again tonight. It's just the pass offense, the diversity in their offense, and the weapons that they have at their disposal is as good as I've ever seen Alabama have offensively. Jalen Hurts continues at quarterback. He came in in the first half, played very well as did the starter to a uh, tongue of Iloa. Najee Harris, the running back, 
Drop for a two yard loss. He stays in there. Hurts pass incomplete. Looking for Henry Ruggs. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, just before halftime, Tua Tonga Valoa was being worked on on the sideline by the athletic trainers. It looked like he was having cramps in both calves as both legs were being worked on. He then left the field early before halftime. He has come out, and I can see him noticeably limping as we wait for the call. And, and Tua is on the sideline. I can see him without his helmet, and he's just very gingerly walking right now. So it looks like we'll see a heavy dose of Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I saw him leave the field. I thought he just had to go to the bathroom. I mean, I've been there before. Get a little early start to halftime, but apparently something else. Najee Harris dragging tacklers with him inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Alabama. They had four touchdown drives in the first half that lasted less than a minute. This one likely to end in a touchdown. It'll be a little longer than a minute, and there is an injured Ole Miss player slow to get up. Austrian Robinson, one of their backup defensive linemen, down right now. Young man from New York, grew up in Harlem. He's a long way from home as well. Mm -hmm. well the Trinity Pauling prep school. You wouldn't expect to be cramps now. And as Holly said, too, is limping just a little bit. They had the entire half to hydrate. And Todd had the entire half to eat. He took advantage of every minute. Friends, you can check out our alternate alternative angle Xfinity Skycam coverage. I only have the entire commercial to read this card of tonight's game streaming live on ESPN 3 and on the ESPN app and on Xfinity X1. Xfinity Skycam coverage. Second down one for Alabama. First possession of the second half leading 49 to 7. They've scored 49 unanswered points. Jalen Hurts, five out of six passing off the bench, 57 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Woo. Josh Jacobs and Benito Jones does enough of this. Uh, drop for a loss, five yards. Yeah, just a quick burst, first step by Benito Jones. Gets right in there. A couple backup linemen. That was Deontay Brown playing left guard for Alabama. And he was stunned on that play by the quickness of Benito Jones. Jones, a junior from Waynesboro, Mississippi. Highly touted prospect coming out of Wayne County High School. Third down and six. Hurts off his back foot. Flags down. Incomplete pass intended for Henry Ruggs and broken up by JV and Hamilton. Flags thrown in the area of defensive holding. Ole Miss showed their hand that time. They showed the inside blitz, so Jalen Hurts knew that he had man coverage and was going to the end zone. I think the hold might have been on Judy, though, in the slot. Hubert Owens, the referee, leading this SEC officiating crew. Holding on the defense on an eligible receiver doing a legal forward pass play. The penalty is half the distance from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Judy's in the slot. I think this is where the grab was right there. You saw his jersey get pulled as the ball was in the air. Ball a little bit thrown behind rugs. Judy has certainly had a busy night. Three catches, over 100 yards, a couple touchdowns. Yeah. Three catches, 136 yards. Josh Jacobs could not get away from Montrell Custis, who was just called for the hold on the previous play. I think Nick Saban and Mike Loxley trying to pay it off for Josh Jacobs. You know, he had the long kickoff return to start this possession. Kind of the third guy in the batting order at the running back position. Had a 77-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the opener against Louisville. 
He's in there now and trying to get the ball in the end zone here. Saw Mike Loxley, offensive coordinator in the middle of the screen. Always been impressed by him. Remember when he was back at Illinois? Yeah. On a Rose Bowl staff with Ron Zook, considered then one of the up and coming assistants. Excellent play caller there for Juice Williams in that offense and doing a terrific job in his first year as the coordinator here. Of course, an embarrassment of riches with which to work. Yeah. Well, again, we, we mentioned six new coaches. That's Dan Enos next to Jalen Hurst, the new quarterback coach, was with Brett Bielema at Arkansas the last three years. Wide receiver coach is Josh Gaddis, who came over from Penn State. He's new. <laughs> the only kind of holdover is the, the offensive line coach. Brent Key's been there for three years. Joe Panunzio was tight ends coach last year. He's coaching the running backs. Well, not only does Nick do a great job of, in his staff of recruiting high school players, but he goes and recruits the best assistants away from other top programs around the country. Yeah. Most highly regarded coaches in the building as analysts as well. And is that a catch? It looks like it is. Devontae Smith with the touchdown, and Alabama becomes the first team in the history of the SEC, which dates back to 1933 to score 50 points or more in each of the first three games of the season. If you throw this ball in the right place to the back shoulder, it's just impossible to defend. They'll probably take a look to see if it hit the ground. The previous play is under further review. Bobbling it there. Yeah, I don't think that's going to stand as a as a completed touchdown. The ball can hit the ground. That that's not illegal, but he didn't have it didn't appear that he had control of the ball when it hit the ground. And that's why I think this one's going to get waved off. Well, let's see if we have a good look at it from our progressive pylon cam. I don't think that's a catch. What say you, Mr. Lemonnier, Bill? Incomplete. The ruling is that the pass was incomplete. <laughs> Ball would be placed at the previous spot. It'll be third down. Todd hit it right on the head when he said, if you control the ball first, and then it touches the ground and you maintain that control, you can have a catch. But that ball clearly hit the ground while it, he was trying to get control. Good job by replay. A good job by you and by Todd. You know, you guys are great in these one-sided games. We did Pitt Penn State last week. It's 51 to 6. Tonight it's 49 to 7. That's 100 to 13 in our two games the last two weeks. We still have a half to go here. So it's third down and goal. And they have not gotten above 50 points for the third straight game yet. Hertz did not get to the end zone about two yards short. And they'll try to kick a field goal to get over the 50 mark. If they kick this field goal, Todd, do I have to say the note again yeah, about I think the you first do. team yes. to score over 50 in the SEC in the first three games of the season? As you said, the one area that's a little shaky, and then, you know, Nick will address it. Well, you know, they brought in a graduate transfer, first mm -hmm. of all, Austin Jones, who was from Temple. And a good one, fourth all-time yeah. leading scorer in the history of Temple football. Really good. He comes down here, and in the first two games, he missed three extra points. And so they went to another guy, Bulabas, who's a redshirt freshman, and uh, given him a chance to be the kicker. Montrell Custis is being tended to. And he's close to the edge of the field down there. They're already a little light at that position. His backup, Vernon Dasher, is suspended tonight and will not play. Had to move a few guys around. There's Custis right there, just kind of grabbing that right knee. Boy, you hate to see that. He missed all of spring practice with a shoulder injury. Has been playing really well. I mean, one of the one of the guys who has been a bit of a bright spot for their defense. A 
up on his feet. Let's hope it's just a cramp. Looks like it might be. Among the many players they had to replace from the national championship team a year ago, one of the great punters in the history of college football, oh, J.K. Yeah. Scott, who's already had a nice start to his NFL career with Green Bay, and Andy Papanastas. So they thought it would be Austin Jones. He scuffled last week. Here's Bullivus. Ibid. 52 points. That's three straight games with more than 50. First team of the SEC to start a season that way. Congratulations. Place at night, night before a game, so much energy, activity down there. A lot of the folks who are here have already made their way back toward the square, the Grove, for some refreshments, perhaps. Bolivis with another touchback. Here's Adnan Verk. Wow, well that was by far the biggest test yeah. of the three games for Ohio State without Urban Meyer. And they're in a battle there for sure. Ohio State averaged 64 and a half points per game in their first two wins of the season against Oregon State and Rutgers. Much different opponent tonight. And you were talking earlier about, well, let's take a look at Ohio State tonight, see how they fare yeah. when we're trying to determine if Alabama's clearly the best team of the country. Yeah. I'm ready to say they're clearly the best team of the country. Well, I think they are right now because the other team that everybody talks about is Clemson, and they've been a little bit sluggish mm -hmm. out of the gate here early in the season. Now, you know, they played in a very hostile environment, College Station, <clears throat> a week ago. But they haven't looked, I don't think, the way people expected them to. Scotty Phillips, the ball carrier. And Quinnen Williams made the tackle, and he heads off. First possession of the second half for Ole Miss. They scored on a 75-yard touchdown in the first play of the game. Led 7-0. They've watched Alabama score 52 in a row. Jordan Ta'amu became the starter late last year when Shea Patterson got injured. Since transferred to Michigan, the pass is batted down to the line of scrimmage by Anthony Jennings. And that really ignited the team yeah. last year. Jordan Tamu came in, went three and two. They won three of the last four to finish six and six in a year with a lot of stuff going on. Hugh Freeze resigned not long before the year. They made Matt Luke the interim coach. They had sanctions, a bowl ban, which is also the case this year as well. They won't play in a bowl game unless they win their appeal. They're still waiting to hear. That win in the Egg Bowl, an upset over Mississippi State, seemed to be the final reason that Ross Bjork, the athletic director, needed to give Matt Luke the head coaching yeah. job going forward and remove the interim tag, which he had all of last year. Substitution infraction, defense, 12 players in the formation, five yard penalty, still fourth down. We from mentioned the 30 yard line. The, yeah, mentioned the, the new offense and defensive coordinators. Alabama with a new special teams coordinator as well. Coming over, Jeff Banks. His first year was at Texas AM in the last five years. Mac Brown to punt again. Punted five times in the first half. Jalen Waddle back deep. Brown back 37 yards in the first half. That's a fair catch of a 36 yard punt. Big night as expected for Jerry Judy. Well, Ole Miss said, we got to know where he is. Well, they knew where he is, but they didn't do a very good job on him. You've got to collide with him. Even if you're running out to zone, you can't let him just run free into your defense and attack the middle of your defense. He was targeted three times tonight. He had three catches for 136 yards and two touchdowns. But a big reason that he was so open and he was such a good guy to go to is they just didn't put any pressure on him physically at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> and Jared Judy is uh, clearly the uh, the go-to guy. 
He's had two touchdown receptions in each of their three games this year. Najee Harris got knocked down by Tarikas Tisdale after a short game. And Mike Loxley said he's their best route runner. Yeah. Great at the top of the routes to get over. Not blazing speed, but he certainly looks like he's fast with as often yeah. as he's open by a lot. You know, he had 14 catches last year as a freshman, and that was good enough for being in second place. I mean, Calvin Ridley was clearly the lead receiver, the main guy they went to. This year's pass offense completely different in terms of how the ball is distributed, and I think we're going to see these three sophomores have similar numbers all the way through the season. Devontae Smith, the catch. Yeah, last year, Ridley had 63 catches. Bo Scarborough was second with 17, but he's a running back. Right. And then Judy with 14. Ridley was targeted 97 times. 71 more than any other player. And some of that was his talents, and Jalen Hurts had so much confidence and ability to be open. Some of it was by scheme. Right. Gordon Brian Dable came out of the NFL and had the approach that he was going to in each play put his best receiver in the number one option in the formation and because they have great balance wide receiver now Mike Loxley isn't going to move people around to be the featured receiver on every play and and Lane Kiffin did the same thing and and McElwain did it before that they've had feature guys they've had star receivers that have been the number one guy in all the progressions and this year's just a little bit different. Now, one of these guys might emerge to be the go-to guy, but for right now, uh, they are all equally part of this pass offense. Screen on second and 11. There's Henry Ruggs, very close to the first down to the Ole Miss 35-yard line. Josiah Coatney made the tackle. Well, when you have some of these stars, you want to throw it to him right. as often as you can. No Julio Jones, one of the best receivers in the NFL for sure. How about 124 catches for Amari Cooper in a single season? Yeah, but you look at that next receiver, that's that's what the big difference this year. Again, you're not going to see that kind of disparity with the group they have. And part of that's the receivers, and part of it's a quarterback who can read through progressions extremely well. Calvin Ridley, the first-round pick, one of the four that Alabama had in this year's draft. They had 12 players drafted in total, yeah. and they just reload and back as the number one team in the country. Najee Harris, the carrier on the last play. I got to really tip my hat to one of our colleagues, Kirk Herbstreit, because he made a couple statements before he was getting ready to do the Alabama-Louisville game and before they had decided who the starting quarterback was going to be. And he said he'll be surprised if it's not Tua. And if he does become the starter, they're going to score 50 points every game because of how good their offense is going to be. And. Uh, so far, that has been right on, right on point. Jalen Hurts runs out of bounds near the 30-yard line. And you, you look at what both of these guys have done. And again, I think Jalen Hurts is, is a much better quarterback, a much more comfortable-looking quarterback in the passing game than he was a year ago. But, but Tua Tungabailoa is special. I mean, his ability to see, his vision, his ability to distribute the football, we may not see him the rest of the night. Uh, you know, he had a good night. But he's special. Mm -hmm. When he's on the field, this pass offense is, is special. Third down and five with the big lead. Play clock all the way down too far down. Midway through the third quarter. Flag down for delay of game against Alabama. Well, your quarterback should see that, but I'm kind of surprised nobody on the sideline didn't call a timeout to help him as well. Usually, if, if a coach sees that that's happening and the quarterback's not aware of it, it's very easy to call a timeout on the sideline and avoid that five-yard penalty. You mentioned the commitment from Alabama. Butch Jones, head yeah. coach at Cincinnati Test, he's in their building now as an analyst. Yeah. Lou Spanos, who's defense coordinator at UCLA, been around a long time. He's in their building as an analyst. You know, these guys would be uh, the top assistant on many staffs. C.J. Moore, the interception for Ole Miss. And that's the first interception thrown by Hurts this year. Well, we saw C.J. Moore 
not be in a position to help on a pass to Judy in the first half. This time, he is in a position to come and help on Judy, and he makes the interception and a nice play for the... All right, and then thank you. Henry Ruggs heading to the locker room for Alabama. One of those talented sophomore wide receivers. After the interception, they took a look at the replay and team that C.J. Moore was down. His knee hit the ground at the four, so they moved the ball back a little bit. Isaiah Willard carried on first down. First pick of the year for C.J. Moore, fourth of his career. He's a senior from Bassfield, Mississippi. Is that the uh, their yeah, version of the turnover chain? That really is a chain. It is. <laughs> I think it's got a big lock on the front too. Holly's probably got. Yeah. Got Holly knows there. everything about all of these turnover things. Maybe that they just don't want him to get off the bench and he's chained to the bench. Who knows? I doubt it. He's a talented player. Yep. He's had enough of the chain. Does that, do you think it loses some of its luster when it's 52 to 7? Probably a little bit. Yep. Still is a nice play, especially considering, you know, a play earlier in the game where he wasn't there to help on that inside receiver. It's, it's just good to see a guy learn from a mistake and be in a better position to make a play later in the ballgame. Jordan Tamu. Let's go down to Holly Rowe with five and a half to go in the third. You guys, when Matt Luke went into the locker room with Ole Miss at the half, they were down 49 to seven. The message he delivered was, look, there are no 42 yard or 42 point plays. We're going to have to do this one play at a time. And he said, no matter what, we're in it together. All I'm asking for you guys to do is go out there and get better. We have seen a little life after that turnover. Yep, they're trying to take something away from this and right on cue, an interception and a touchdown for Xavier McKinney. Well, Xavier McKinney is right here and again it looks like two safeties that are going to split but he's going to work to the middle and just kind of bait Ta'amu into the throw he's reading the eyes of the quarterback the whole time and he picks it off that's a case where the quarterback's eyes were outside did not see the inside defender and threw it right to him first career interception for Xavier McKinney Mm. Gonna be a little hot doing that all night long. Better that than push up stuff. Yeah. 59 7. You know, are people back in the grove right now, I bet. There are. I just want to go back to a point that, that Holly made in her conversation with Matt Luke because, you know, you gotta find something to build on. I mean, this is a team that, again, is not going to play in a bowl game. They only get 12 shots at it. They get 12 games. They did not play particularly well at all in the first half last week in one of their home games. They have not played well tonight, but they still have a whole quarter of play to do something, to try to have something positive to build on going forward because they get nine more of these afterwards. Mm -hmm. Matt Luke from Gulfport, Mississippi, about a five-hour drive here. Been an Ole Miss person his whole life. His dad played football here. His brother played football here. As a matter of fact, his brother was the starting quarterback here. Tom is now on the staff. He said it was pretty cool when you're in the seventh or eighth grade. You drive up to a campus like this, and your brother is the big man on campus. His wife, Ashley, is from Oxford. This is the job he always wanted. And he inherited a mess. And I thought, all things considered, six and six last year, yeah. <laughs> considering the turmoil that surrounded this program, was pretty solid, including the three out of four to end the year with a win in their arch rival game in the Egg Bowl.
Third and nine, Tom, who taken down by Jamie Mosley, the younger brother of former Alabama great C.J. Mosley, now stand out for the Baltimore Ravens. And here's a look back at a couple days after the season ended. I want ended. you to welcome the new head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels. Come on in. for Matt Luke the players did not know all they knew was Ross Bjork the AD was going to introduce the coach and they were delighted they played very hard from last year many of them said they were playing in large part to make sure that coach Luke got the job going forward Mac Brown's punt goes out of bounds at the 28 yard line Hey, Sean, the players were not all that excited with how that announcement went down. In fact, A.J. Brown told us because they had him in a room and the door was going to open, they didn't know who it was be. They were mad. They thought it wasn't going to be Matt Luke, and that they were going to have to go through a new coach, and they were already furious. And so as soon as they said his name and he came through that door, one of the very first players up hugging his neck was A.J. Brown. They were so excited that he got the job. And the people I talked to around here, the one thing they keep saying, He's one of us. They feel like one of theirs has this head coaching job. And he might get a little longer honeymoon because of his history in this state and in this program. New quarterback in third of the night. It's Mac Jones. Redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida in the Bowl School. Outstanding academic school in addition to a proud sports history. Victor Evans welcomed him to the game with a spirited rush. And the pass went over the head of Derek Keith. So they're going deep down the depth chart now for Alabama, but still three and a half to go in the third quarter. Jones appeared briefly in each of the first two games against Louisville and Arkansas State. You know you're hammering people when you play three quarterbacks in each game. Brian Robinson, his first carry of the night, and 13th of the season. He's fourth on the depth chart, but Coaches really like him too. They'd like to get him more involved. He'd be much more significant on the depth chart yeah. elsewhere. Local guy played at Hillcrest High School in Tuscaloosa. Miller Forrest, all number 87, deep down the depth chart at tight end, also in the game. Robinson bumped out of bounds by Zedrick Woods. But if you're Ole Miss, Matt Luke trying to take advantage of this half against the best team in the country and looking forward, it, the defense has to be alarming. I mean, yeah. yeah, you're playing a great team, but you weren't playing a great team last week and you really scuffled. You had all winter to fix it. They thought they'd be a lot better on defense under the coordinator, Wesley McGriff, and they're not. And uh, he's one of the real likable guys in coaching, but I think if the defense continues to play like this, yeah. uh, he's going to take more and more heat here locally. Do they have good enough players on defense? I mean, they've recruited well. They keep yeah. having top 25 recruiting classes, but it looks like the, most of that talent's on the offensive well, side of the ball. I, yeah, and I, I think that's where, you know, the two most prominent positions that they can recruit to because of what they've done historically and putting guys in the league is wide receiver and left tackle. And defensively, they just, I don't know that they've recruited the same level. Ooh. As they have offensively. How well, about that throw by Matt Jones and a nice catch by Jalen Waddle. 25 yards on the completion and the first completion of his career for Matt Jones with through thrown two touchdowns, two passes rather prior to tonight. Took a big shot too. Tisdale got a big hit on the quarterback and he stood in there and delivered a perfect throw to Waddle on the corner route. I think Tariq is Tisdale's a guy who could help improve this defense as the season goes along. Brian Robinson inside the 25 yard line. You cheer for a guy like Wesley McGriff. We really enjoyed our visit with him yesterday. He talked about how he did not want to be a coach. He thought he was going to be a military man. His dad and three brothers served in the United States military. He played at Savannah State and decided after a couple of years in the military, he needed to be closer to home with his mother. So Bill Davis, the late Bill Davis, was his coach at Savannah State, offered him a job in coaching 
in a career started by accident. He told us he made $17,000 in 1990. But not only did he have to coach a position group, but he was the coach of the baseball team at Savannah State and a dorm director. He said, I was a pretty good baseball coach. We won a couple <laughs> conference championships. Final minute of the third quarter. Alabama's outscored Ole Miss here in the third, 10 to nothing. Robinson close to the first down. And they don't have to snap it again here in the third quarter. Henry Ruggs back on the sideline after he went to the dressing room briefly. Well, we thought this would be a better challenge for Alabama compared to their first two opponents on the road, an SEC opponent. Despite the problems that Ole Miss had had on defense, we thought their offense was going to be able to kind of match scoring for at least a while. But a pretty dominant performance for Alabama. And as you think about them going forward, getting better defensively, and a schedule that really plays out in their favor, it is not that difficult looking down the stretch for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And a three quarters college football primetime on ESPN from Oxford, Mississippi. Hampton. On to the fourth quarter we go. Alabama leading 59 to 7 and in possession of the ball as their drive continues. Mac Jones, the redshirt freshman at quarterback, and Brian Robinson, the ball carrier, tackled by Wamid Sonogo, nicknamed Momo. Said he went to high school in Plano, Texas. Young man from his area who, like Muhammad's family, hailed from. Africa, his yeah. nickname was So So. So his brother said, Well, he's So So. He's going to UL, UCLA. Why don't we call you Momo? <laughs> and he's going to Ole Miss. When it's 59 to 7, we get the nickname stories in. Jones. It'll be second down now. And 11. Jalen Hurts came off the bench with seven out of ten for 85 yards passing two touchdowns and interception after two at Tungo by Loa. Went 11 out of 15 for 191 two touchdowns no interception really only one bad decision in that whole process with both those guys it was the interception that Jalen threw got a little bit greedy went for the deep throw into the slot he had a wide open crossing receiver and just kind of tried to uh, bite off a bigger play that wasn't there. Robinson stood up and gang tackled. Jaquez Jones leading the way. He's a true freshman out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama in Hillcrest High School, which you mentioned moments ago, getting a chance to play here at garbage time. Not garbage time for these guys out there trying to make an impression. And I would think if you're a young guy like Jaquez Jones, you can make an impression. There might be a few starting spots up for grabs on this old Miss defense after three weeks of this. Oh, and tackling. A former teammate because Brian Robinson from Hillcrest High School as well. So that's two guys going at each other from the same high school. Third down and 12. Mac Jones runs out of time and gets taken down. Another backup in on the play. Markel Winters listed as a third team defensive lineman, senior out of Tallahassee, Florida. Nice positive plays again for this Ole Miss defense. You're looking for anything you can put a little highlight together for your film, for your for your study. You're going to look at the bad plays and the mistakes, but you want to have a couple silver lining plays too to say, okay, let's let's build off of this and go forward next week. Perhaps a chance to build a little confidence for Joseph Bullivis from 44, and that one almost dead center. 62 on the board now for Alabama and a 62 to 7 lead in the fourth. Chicago to take on Khalil Mack and the Chicago Bears. That's at 8.15 Eastern, also simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2. Coverage begins with Monday night countdown at 6. Great start for the Cincinnati Bengals. Andy Dalton, former TCU Horn Frog. Of course, TCU in a great game tonight with Ohio State right now down in Texas. 
Another touchback, another report from Holly Rowe. Well, we wanted to keep a close eye on the Ruggs brother interaction tonight. Henry, number 11 for Alabama. Kevontae, number 27 for Ole Miss. They haven't been in too many things, but look at this right here. Henry with the touchdown. Kevontae throws him to the ground, but a little bit too late. And then a nice wrap-up tackle here. He gets in, barks in his face a little bit. A little talking, a little talking. But big smile as he walks away. I can't even imagine how weird it is to have to tackle your brother out there. It's probably not the first time that they've tackled each other. I can guarantee you that. Or talk some stuff at each other. Yeah. Jordan Tom with a little option look, and here's Tylen Knight thrown across the boundary by Markel Benton. You know, we've talked about the defense finding some positive things to build on. I think Jordan Tom, who's got to find some positive things. You know, he came into this game, everything he was doing was perfect. Right around 70% completion, no interceptions. He's been rattled tonight. He's his whole rhythm has been disrupted. He has not had a, a good ball game, but he's still out there, and this is an opportunity, whether it's against starters or backups, to get something positive to go forward on because you're gonna have to score and be really good offensively to win football games this season for Ole Miss. And, yeah, and they can't get stop it. anybody. Yeah. And a rough night for Tom, who after the 75-yard touchdown pass on the first play, and you said it, we talked about the wide receiver cores of each team. Program that they have the best wide receiver group in the country. And where have they been? Yeah. Metcalf only had one other catch after the first play of the game. A.J. Brown has three catches. And Lodge has one. Well, here's what, here's what happens when you play Alabama. Nick Saban and his defense, it doesn't matter who the coordinator is, he wants to play with two safeties deep and be able to pressure the quarterback with four. If he can do that, then he can guard all your receivers and he can add help with safeties on the most dangerous guys. But if you can run the football against that, then he has to move another guy in, a safety down into the box and play with one safety, and then that creates more one-on-one -on -one situations in your pass game. He never had to do that tonight after the first play and they were able to just control this Ole Miss offense and a hot quarterback by just playing base defense. Mac Brown to punt. Trayvon Diggs back deep this time. And he makes a fair catch at the 24-yard line. 10-20 remaining. Alabama leading Ole Miss 62-7. to Jerry Judy. Averaging 45 yards and change per reception. It took a little while to get warmed up. He scored the first touchdown each of their first two games against ooh, Louisville and Arkansas State. Whistles and flags to stop the play, but didn't stop Kadir Shepard. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty, first down. Scott Lashley back up tackle in there. Please reset the game clock. 10 minutes, <laughs> 20 seconds. 10 20. Lashley not only got the penalty, but he also got his quarterback hit because that was the guy lined up over him that came charging in on the movement. Thank you. Mac Jones, the quarterback. And Brian Robinson continues at a running back. He gets stopped for a loss. Jones, another highly recruited player, four-star prospect on a scale of five by almost all the major ranking services, including ESPN. Which had him ranked as the number 17 high school quarterback in the country. Took the Bulls school to a state championship game in 2016, redshirted last year at Alabama reading through that media guide they even had the number one ranked long snapper who went to IMG for his senior year I mean <laughs> I didn't even know they ranked those guys Maybe they rank punters and kickers but long snappers. Robinson carries again getting plenty of action here now in the second half with the outcome long since decided
All right, Todd, now that we've moved from ESPN to ESPN News, does this count as two appearances tonight in our contract? <laughs> Offense number 10, so. five-yard penalty, well, third down. Looking for the silver lining in anything, we thank the McDonough family and Mrs. Blackledge for sticking with us here on ESPN <laughs> News. We had to make room for uh, Steve Levy and Brian Greasy and Todd McShay. They yeah. had a nice ball game it's tonight. Be a good one. Alabama in reverse on this possession. And... Todd, you've made the point as we chatted during the week about Alabama's schedule. You know, this looms as one of their toughest road tests of the season. Yeah. Obviously, it hasn't been very tough. Robinson gets them back across the 20. Well, obviously, the SEC West is, is a great league. But when you look at who their crossover opponents are, they always play Tennessee out of the East, and Tennessee is not very strong right now in their first year under Jeremy Pruitt. Apparently our graphic schedule stayed over on ESPN. They didn't make the trip over here to ESPN <laughs> News with us. They're trying to shift it as we speak. <laughs> Skyler DeLong to punt. Is that the first time I've said that tonight? I think it might be. And Elijah Moore, the fair catch. Not the first time we've said that. 34-yard punt. Take a look at Alabama's schedule. Only three more road games, and of those three, this is the only one I think is the most alarming. LSU playing really good right now. Baton Rouge, a tough place, although Alabama has had success playing in Baton Rouge. Two more non-conference games. It should be 50-point exercises with Louisiana and the Citadel before the Auburn game. And you know, Still some tough opponents, but on the road, really only that game at LSU. It'll be double-digit favorites you would think in all of their road games except LSU and I don't even know yeah. what the who knows a lot of football lot to be of played between yep. now and then Tylen Knight the running back little guy 5'6 171 pounder out of Pearl Mississippi led his high school team to the 6A state championship a year ago oh, they were 16 and 0 who read the media guide too yeah. that wasn't the only one I like I like the little tidbits on guys. You know, I like the little extra things. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me. Well, we haven't really talked about Tom, whose backstory is the starting quarterback here. We mentioned earlier, no D1 offers out of high school. Wanted to play at the University of Hawaii. Grew up admiring Colt Brennan, who starred on some very good Hawaii teams. But they offered him a preferred walk-on as a defensive back. He didn't want to do that. And he didn't want his parents to have to pay for him to go to college. They're his folks, Billy and Louisa. So he took a full scholarship offer at New Mexico Military Institute. Yeah. A lot of guys don't know who played last week. He said one of the reasons I went there, that's where Roger Staubach went. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know that at all. Did not know that. I'm not even, I assume it's true. I mean, I'm, I did not fact check that, but yeah. I, you know, that was Jordan's school, and he seems like a very honest and smart guy. So we're going with it. But uh, he wasn't even the starter his first year there. He had a magnificent second season, and then started to get some interest, and Came here at Ole Miss. So I wasn't sure because they had Shea Patterson here, but I just believed it was part of God's plan. And we talked earlier about he's a man of very deep faith, as is his good pal Tua Tungo Vailoa. Right. And it has worked out for him. Took over as the starter, helped rescue their season last yeah. year to get to 500. And uh, prior to tonight, it played very well this yeah. season. And hey, there's no disgrace in struggling against Alabama. One of the things that Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, has done everywhere he's been, and it, and it paid off last year, is he's always repped his number one and number two offense, and particularly the quarterbacks, the same number of plays. And so when Shea Patterson was hurt last year, Jordan Ta'amu had gotten a lot of reps and was ready to step in and play, and they actually were more efficient offensively down the stretch with Jordan Ta'amu at quarterback than they were with Shea Patterson. And so then he kind of picked up right where he left off last year in the first couple of ball games. But as you mentioned, this is a little different animal going against Alabama. Phil Longo said, I want to get the number two's experience. So they're ready. As you said, he also said, I don't want to wear out the number yep. ones over the course of the year. You feel like after a while, you almost practice your starters into the ground. Want to keep them fresher. Especially if you play up tempo like they like to play. When they've got it rolling, they're playing extremely fast. 
Tylen Knight. Short game there. Let's take a look at our unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. And here's what it is. NWO MIA. Yeah. Well, they had six catches combined last year. And they had one better than that this year. So two years in a row, this outstanding NFL caliber receiving group virtually non-existent against the Alabama defense. Mac Brown on the punt again. You, know, you like the nice stories. Mac Brown, a good guy for several years. Put up a lemonade stand every summer in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. He's raised more than $50,000 over the years for ALS. Uh, he, you know, he, he, oh God, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. This happened That's... several times too. Why don't you put that box up to your mouth and just start chugging the popcorn. I think that's the end of someone else reaching into the popcorn box, is it not? It's true love there. That, that's got to be true love. But there were two people. There was another woman to the right of our screen we did not see who was also diving in on the, uh, yeah, on the same box. She's, she's, that's right. Yeah, you want some too? <laughs> Here. Let me slobber on it a little bit uh, more. No first. thanks. Yeah, there you hey, go. it's great. <laughs> a little moisture that I'd like, but yeah, oh, that boy. is true love. <laughs> we'll monitor the behavior of the other ten people who are still here as well. Mac Jones handed it off to Jerome Ford, and he got driven back. College football prime time. <laughs> Presented by Hampton by Hilton. We hope they're still with us next week after this. You can't unsee this. It's amazing how much popcorn is in that box. It yeah. must be a trick box or something because uh, he continues to just chug it. <laughs> Ronnie Clark is the running back now. Oh. I don't know how many people dressed tonight for Alabama, but I think they've all played. Three hour trip. Did you find it odd that they flew? From it's, Tuscaloosa well, it's to kind Memphis. of a tweener. It's a it's a it's a hard one to figure. They're busing back. They flew to Memphis, stayed in Olive Branch, which is about an hour drive from game, here. Drove here to the game, and then they're busing back to Tuscaloosa. It's a lot easier when they go to Starkville because that's only about 82 miles away from Tuscaloosa, and they bus all the time. But it's kind of an in-between deal. I don't know. Not sure which I would prefer. Like keep winning 62 to 7. You're going to keep yeah. taking the yeah, plane. Yeah, I change it. Take That's the jet. Right. Here's Skyler DeLong. Shockingly, another very highly recruited punter who wound up at Alabama. U.S. Army All-American in high school last year. Elijah Moore, a fair catch. And here's a look at tonight's PlayStation Player Index. The performance of... Tua Tunga Vailoa, you know, he's putting up these numbers in fractions of games. Yeah. You know, because right. they, they're killing everybody. They're getting Hurts and Jones into every game. And uh, 191 yards, two more touchdowns on 15 passes. That actually made his uh, touchdown to pass attempt ratio worse yeah. tonight for the it, season. I, I, you know, it's obviously he's talented, but his efficiency is, is remarkable. I mean, he just... There's just very few wasted plays. I mean, every decision is a good decision. Uh, Todd, apparently we have other people who are still watching us because we understand the popcorn people. Their phone has started ringing. And I think they're saying, <laughs> what are you doing eating the popcorn for Chug guy over there who continues to? I mean, is that the same box of popcorn? I'm starting to think there's nothing in that. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. That's funny stuff. Funny stuff. Yep. We didn't get pot of butter on the popcorn, but I'll put a little slobber on there for you, and we'll be good. Yeah. Wow. He's probably saying we should have done this while the game was still on ESPN. <laughs> we went over. Not that we don't love being on ESPN News, which is an outstanding network in and of itself. Tylen Knight, the ball carrier. We're down to 110 to go, and uh, I think they're timing it out. So that popcorn's going to get them all the way to the finish line here tonight. 
Third down and four, under a minute to go. Armani Linton into the game for Ole Miss. He is a backup running back. Big kid, too. Good looking athlete. You got a nugget out of the media guy for him you want to dump on us? Well, he was a, started out as a defensive back, moved to running back in the spring. Mm -hmm. You need to prepare harder for these games. The rest of us were doing namaste this morning at the local yoga. What do we call it? Yoga Center, I guess. It's not yeah. a store. The light in me bows to the light in Nick Saban and all of the Crimson Tide. And the popcorn man and his loyal disciples. As we say namaste, final 10 seconds. Alabama 76 straight wins against unranked opponents. They haven't lost one since 2007 when Auburn beat them as an unranked opponent. Final score 62 to 7. 516 yards of offense for Alabama as the tide called off the dogs in the second half. This has been a presentation of college football on ESPN and ESPN.